Hi everyone, this is Mike from Mixpix Visuals and today we will be going through a couple of tips and tricks to get your workflow improved in Blender. So the first one's not really uh, a trick, it's just a key command. It's control and tab and you get the menu whether you should select vertices, edges or faces. And uh, it's really handy, like you have to move uh, this edge over here obviously and then maybe you want to switch to uh, just change in the vertex. Ver vertex. And uh, normally you would do it down here with these buttons, but everything that's keyed <laughs> I think is uh, actually improving your workflow. So that's number one. Number two is the split tool. Uh, like if you have uh, some geometry that you want to you wanna remove it, uh, you want to split it from the, the rest of the uh, shape, but you, you, you what you could do is you could hit P and then separate selection then you have it separate and then you can merge it back together with control J for join and it's still in the same object but the geometry is is uh, split uh, but what's uh, more efficient and more easier is if you take these and you hit the Y key that, that is split and uh, then you have it it's uh, it separates your selected geometry from the rest number three is my new uh, personal favorite uh, among all the tools no, I, f I found this out the, the other day I, by accident. Like if you make a loop cut and by clicking Control R and uh, you're not really satisfied with where it is, it's uh, this is very simple geometry, but in more advanced geometry, it's even more handy. Like, oh, I want to move it upwards. So you hit G and then Z for moving it in Z axis, but it changes the geometry. You don't really want that. You just want to change how, how the edges flow. And that is when you hit G and accidentally hit G again. And uh, that lets you uh, slide uh, the edge um, through the geometry without actually changing it. I think it actually works for, for vertices as well. Yeah, you can do the same thing there, uh, but it, it's not uh, as obvious, really. Um, uh, faces, I haven't actually tried it. Let's try it. Uh, that, does, that does something. Not, maybe not what you want, but it's, it's really handy. Uh, and the way I make the loop cuts is also by hitting Control r and if you didn't know, if you scroll the mouse wheel while well, using the control R, you um, get as many loop cuts as you want. So that's that's something. Next on the list, there's the uh, multi-view. I don't know what it's really called, but it's the multi-view. Like, oh, I want to watch this uh, maybe through the camera by hitting numpad zero or in the front view or the side view or the top view. But what if you want to look at all of them at the same time? Yeah, you just hit control, alt and Q for quad view. Yeah, quad view, I think it's called. So that way you can see everything from from every side and place it accordingly, like if it has to be really specific, but you still want to see how it looks in the camera view, you can do this. And this also works in the different uh, viewing modes, like in wireframe or in the, in the rendered mode. It just takes a little while to load because you have to calculate four different angles at the same time. Next up is the bridge tool which uh, like, uh, can really save you a lot of time if you have a, a, a cylinder uh, or any shape basically that you need to, to like, uh, merge together and you're like, oh, I take this one and hit F and I take this one and hit F and it's like putting a lot of faces between them. Instead, you can just select the, the first edge loop and then the second edge loop. They have to have as many vertices as each other so they correspond correctly. And then you hit space to, to, to search and you hit bridge edge loops and bam there's the magic for you and you don't have to do nothing this is pretty simple geometry it's like just uh, eight actions but but if you have more complex it's a big time saver and uh, similar to that one we have the uh, the grid fill which I also found uh, recently uh, which is like oh, I need to fill this hole and if I would do that I would need to fill that and maybe uh, loop cut this and then uh, yeah, put these ones together, yeah, and everything. Uh, and that's tedious. So what you could do is you could select that edge loop and hit uh, space again and search for grid fill. It's somewhere in the menus as well, but I used the, the space one. Uh, and that way you get a neat grid, uh, really good looking. Next up is the grid fill. Uh, what that does is like if you have a, a couple of faces and you wanna extrude them to make, I don't know, maybe a gear or a cog or something, and uh, you extrude them all and then size them 
up and uh, they are part of the same mesh so it's basically just like you 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 broaden the the cylinder which is not at all what you want uh, so normally what I would do is I would first select this one and extrude it with the, with the E and then I would do the, the same for that one the same for that one and then I would like move them out not not like this not, not at all like that but but you get the gesture but what you could do actually is you could select all of them and then hit instead of E for uh, the normal extrusion you hit alt E and you get the menu and you can uh, select individual faces and what that does is that every face that you take it, it uh, separates it and, and then extrudes it which it saves a lot of time so if you do that and then give them that and you got yourself a, a sunny looking cog <laughs> Another thing that's pretty basic is the ability to to expand and shrink your your selection uh, by hitting Control and then Plus or Control uh, Minus, uh, which yeah, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Really, uh, you can da do that from a, a, a loop of faces, or you could do it from an individual face. You can do it from vertices, like like that, and that way it's very smooth in a sphere. Like if you had to take the top one and just one remove half the sphere, you just do that, and you would delete that. Um, yeah, uh, it just, I don't really know, I haven't tried it, works fine. It's pretty much the face thing, but it just starts off with one. And uh, de depending on your complexity of your mesh, this might work differently smooth because of edge flow, uh, but on basic basic geometry, it's, it's really uh, nice. I realize also that I've uh, shown a couple of tricks uh, without really explaining what I do. Uh, in, like uh, the 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 uh, edge and face loop select, uh, which is really smooth. Like instead of having to select all of these, you just uh, hit uh, hold Alt key, and then you 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 press between two faces. Like I wanna I want the ring that 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 includes these two faces. I I hit Alt and then right click between those two, and I get all of that line. And then I, I if I maybe want this one as well, I can Alt and Shift click to to uh, select both of them. Uh, and do that in that manner, and uh, that that works well with the uh, edges and uh, vertices as well. Actually, the last thing I want to talk about today is the uh, the uh, pivot changing uh, tool. <laughs> Not really a tool, but like uh, you, you probably noticed that if you you can um, if you rotate something uh, from from I think by default it's set on the medium point. Like if you rotate th this and this they will rotate around the center of uh, those two uh, those two combined objects pivot which is here uh, you can also do the uh, individual origins uh, to make them rotate around themselves simply and what you could do is also the the 3d cursor like if you have the cursor here you will ro rotate stuff around around that certain point if you push p put it here it'll rotate around that and that that comes very much in handy actually and the 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 hotkey for choosing the 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 3d cursors as an origin is uh, the period key uh, and it's already a period now so it didn't change if you hit control and the comma key uh, you get the the uh, medium point if you hit control uh, control and control period you get the individual origins and if you just hit the p itself it gets to be the 3d cursor and that comes like if you have this this very very simple setup uh, with a with a this ball doing a photo shoot in the studio obviously uh, and you want like oh I don't really want the the uh, this this light to hit it from the front I want it to hit a little from the side and if you would do it normally it's like oh okay I go to top view and auto graphic and I maybe wrote put it here and I rotate it and it doesn't really directly hit it it's not really that important in this case what you could do is you could by hitting shift s uh, and uh, putting cursor to select it you put the 3d cursor in the middle of the ball and if you then hit p and use that as a pivot and you rotate this around and maybe the c-axis you get this automatic like it, it looks at it however you want it and if you just rotate it, it in every in the axis you want Actually, if you hit the R button twice, like you, we did with the double G for for edge slide, you can also get the uh, rotating uh, special <laughs> uh, tool. I don't. I, I think it's maybe called a rotation ball or something like that. It makes uh, 
you have to try it out for yourself. It can't really be explained, but you get more like a free form kind of rotation. It's not just locked around one axis. Uh, and that's really uh, useful sometimes. And that pretty much wraps it up for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Talk to you later.